Welcome everybody to tonight's episode of Too Legit to Crit. I am John Santana. And I'm still Justin. Still Justin, you haven't changed that yet. Still Justin, haven't died hasn't changed. Yeah, uh, you, you might need to get around to that some point. <laughs> you know. You've been saying it for years. I have, I have. <laughs> How have you been keeping? I've been good, man. I've been good. A uh, lot of work, a lot of stuff going on. Did manage to actually get a session in uh, on Wednesday, which was quite quite nice. Um, and yeah, got finally got some some game time. Rolled some dice. Rolled some clicky clacks. And it, was this the campaign that you were planning? The the one aboard the pirate no, ship? No. So this is this is one I'm just playing in. Um, this is not not one that I'm running. Um, so yeah. So we. It's uh, it's a tricky one because like some of the players work really odd hours, oh. um, and the the DM as well, uh, as you know, because you know who it is, uh, works really odd hours. So some nights, some days. So yeah, we we kind of have to plug in game time whenever we can. We can't have like a set day. Like we're playing this night every week. Like we can't. We just can't do it. Um, so we kind of shoehorn it in whenever we can. <laughs> No, I feel that completely um, because when my current campaign sort of started, mm. I was the one doing odd hours as well as <laughs> 90% of my players. Yeah. So it was a case of, right, we're just going to do it online and it's going to be a case of, all right, who's online today? Let's do a couple of hours sort of thing. We've ma It's managed to be balanced. Um, yeah. We've got to kind of account for players not being able to be there quite frequently yeah. mm. and you know we just there's just a moment of suspension of disbelief when we say oh yeah your, your paladin's not there today <laughs> in the middle he's, of a uh, dungeon he's he, just he's, he's, he's polishing his armor in the previous room oh he's shitting <laughs> that's the the general yeah <laughs> he got diarrhea from yeah, last night's that ration is... <laughs> and oddly enough I think it was the player who came up with that <laughs> and then that just kind of snowballed and yeah. now everybody at least in one of the games has got a reason for not being there and <laughs> yeah some of those reasons are pretty fucking dark <laughs> um but yeah no it was it it was nice to to get back to so it was um the session before we'd had like a really big um combat encounter um so the session was just more sort of clean up afterwards um, and kind of planning uh, for what we're going to do and things like that and a few of the characters are being written out at this point um, so both of my characters are being written out um, because the the half orc barbarian I was playing he's kind of run his course he's done his job um, so he's going back to Waterdeep I believe um, or he's staying he's staying no he's staying where he is to look after the girl yeah so essentially what happened was uh we got to a place like on between these two cities right there's like a halfway house type thing um where it's like it's like fortified and it's you can pay to basically stay there overnight they lock the doors so people can't get in it's just like a a safe stop on route to this other city uh between the two and when we got there it had kind of it, it wasn't the owners that we were expecting it was different people um, turns out what had happened was they were some bandits that had sort of got in the one night and just killed everyone um, and then kind of taken over the place um, you know that, that, old, that old classic <laughs> um, and the during the night um, we found the daughter of the previous owners of this like halfway house um and she basically she told us what had happened uh, that you know these these guys had basically murdered everyone she managed to get away and she was like hiding um, and she's got like loads of little hiding places around the place because she's grown up there right so she's got like loads of hiding places there um, and then yeah so then we had a big combat encounter where we basically murdered all of them it was great um, but then afterwards she was like no I'm staying because it's like my family's we've, my family's run this for like generations I'm not leaving um, and Kurt, my my half orc barbarian, he had had a dream about saving that girl previously. Okay. 
so yeah so it, it was always kind of planned that because it was always planned that he was going to leave around this sort of point anyway um because i can't keep playing two characters it's way too much work <laughs> um so yes yeah, so he was going to get written out at this point anyway um but the the cleric that i was playing i kind of built him for a purpose but that purpose isn't really needed anymore so we kind of um his his whole thing for for going was he was he had a, a vision from his deity that he needs to go to this roadhouse this halfway house um to help people there uh, and obviously he's in order to write him out what we've essentially said is he's interpreted that as he needs to help this girl get back on her feet so he's going to stay there and then I've got a new character that's coming in um, but there's also uh, one other character who might be leaving um, and stay, basically staying there as well to help like get the roadhouse back back up and running um, and then the rest of us will be moving on to a different uh, to the, that other city I think no, sounds sounds cool. Um, any sort of hint as to what your new character is going to be? Uh, there is, but I would rather wait until <laughs> we get to the topic of this week because it is heavily, heavily involved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, why doesn't that... That does not surprise me. That, that, <laughs> no, no, that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> well, we... Our Monday game, um, the the whole murdering mystery actually came to yes. a, a conclusion where... Um, did the butler do it? No, the butler did not do it. I'm not going to reveal who did it because Bullshit. I'm Bullshit. thinking I may um, I may actually publish it. So. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so that actually came to a conclusion because in the last... Uh, the last session there was a character death and it was one of these um, moments which kind of happened off screen Mm. which is a GM's wet dream because you can you can play as much as you want Um, so so the death was kind of heavily implied it was never you know we we never actually resolved it on screen so that gave me time for my wheels to start churning and (laughs) and to start coming up with something so the good news is that the character isn't dead oh but (laughs) um he wishes he was (laughs) he has undergone a very gruesome very traumatic form of essentially lobotomizing Ooh, okay. So this week's session, where they actually went to to confront this this person once again, half of that combat was them trying to get get through to this party member who was trying to kill them. Mm. And I set up a system of victory points where the players they didn't have to roll anything, but they just had to get through to him. And yeah. I had a list of topics that the player gave me that would be considered crits. Yeah. <clears throat> so if they tried, if they spent some of their actions during this combat to get through to him, it would account to the overall progression. But if they mentioned some of these specific topics, that progression would be doubled. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. So it got to a point, and it played out perfectly because by the time the big boss had got into melee range was exactly the time where this character snapped out of it. Ah, beautiful. And it was one of those moments where the dice backed up the narrative. Yeah. Because he went, I look up and I swing, and on his first swing fucking crit (laughs) and it was it was glorious it was absolutely phenomenal and i i'm really happy with the way it turned out the character Mm. however is going to be forever changed yeah um i've basically he's gonna have no memory he's got memory of a bond with his party members he's got a vague memory of of a purpose but everything else he's going to have to relearn and that's going to be his sort of narrative from now on 
That's kind of cool. I like that. So actually, it turned out really well. Um, so now the this next session on Monday is going to be clean up, essentially, and sort of resolution mm. of the the different sort of plot threads that that have been pulled at, and introduction to what the next big thing is going to be, which I'm excited to announce, and I'm excited. <laughs> for them to hear it because <laughs> I know my players and they're going to fucking love it. <laughs> so that was me and obviously heavily editing our last yes last episode which yes. was marred with a series of unfortunate so events. many technical issues. Yeah, yeah, my god. So apologies so for any um naff sound quality um, <laughs> but I did what I could. Yeah, I mean, you, you did alright. You did, you did. As, oh yeah, I mean, you did as well as possible with all of the shit that happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that because it was <laughs> it was a clusterfuck. <laughs> well, hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, all that goodness. We don't have any issues this week. But now you've gone and jinxed it. Now you've no, said I, that. Uh, no, no, because I cross fingers and touch wood, so we're fine. Oh, okay, well, cross fingers, touch wood. Okay, that exactly, that normally yeah. kind of does fine. it. Yeah, it's fine. And it's not dice related, so I'm fine. <laughs> um, that's the only jinxes I have. We know this. Mm, fair enough. I will not <laughs> ask you to roll a dice for this yeah, program ever. <laughs> roll a technology check? No. <laughs> no, just let's no. <laughs> so I did my diligence this week and mm. and trawled the internet for possible news that could be um, of relevance to any of our listeners. Um, I did c- pick up quite a few things that are worth kind of looking into slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is World of Darkness. They're the guys that are behind uh, Vampire the Masquerade and, and all that. They are releasing Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th Edition um, due to be released in August. So, I mean, according to this, it's this will officially launch this series into the current versions of World of Darkness content alongside the already successful run of Vampire the Masquerade and Hunter the Reckoning. Have you ever played any of those systems? I have not. Me neither. I'm, I feel like it's due, though. Yeah, I think it's something that we should definitely give a go. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a 40-year-old little goth boy. <laughs> you know the the fact that I haven't tried Vampire the Masquerade is staggering. <laughs> I mean, we we could definitely have a look and uh, maybe maybe look to run something later in the year. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if we're playing Vampire, I'm building less stat. <laughs> it, it's it's gonna happen, and and I'm sure. I am one of millions and millions of people who've played Vampire the Masquerade and their first thing is Lestat. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't know who Lestat is, he's the protagonist of Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles. You heathens. <laughs> but yeah, Werewolf. I mean, I'm, I'm yes. actually quite intrigued. Um, not that not that werewolves have ever been like a massive sort of um, uh, cultural well that I dip into every now and again, but oh, see for me they are. Are they? Yeah, I quite like a werewolf story. I see. Uh, I think it's the like the duality of it, you mm. know, because nine times out of ten they always make like the human form of them, like really uh, like gentle and you know like just peaceful and and calm and then obviously that that transformation happens and they turn into this like bestial like feral creature and i just think that's a really cool kind of thing uh like yeah it's just a really cool concept i mean like having that duality in a in a in a personality in, in one person is pretty cool well that's just kind of given me an idea for for something that i may introduce in my game I want to do a werewolf, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I want the 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 human side of it to be an absolute cunt. Yeah. 
just well again yeah that that would work and then like the the werewolf side is just like uh, not the werewolf <laughs> side is just like lassie <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just like a really friendly thing. Just like, you know, it's the sort of thing that's going to kind of snuggle up to you and, and like sort of tickles behind the ear and <laughs> shit like that. But And, and all of a sudden, he, he the full moon goes away and he's like, oh, for fuck's sake, Dave's back. <laughs> Dave, fuck off. Just go away. Just leave us alone. Come back the next, come back the next full moon. Come back next month. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that's a solid concept. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun. Oh yeah, I'm I'm bringing that into one of my games at some point just for shits and giggles. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, Vampire the Masquerade is, you know, the the clues in the name. Same with, same with uh, the werewolf, um, mm. the apocalypse, but the Hunter the Reckoning. Do you think that's kind of like? the 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 sort of people that are out to to sort of capture and kill these these threats i mean that that would be the kind of logical um like path to to follow along um you know because if you've got vampires and werewolves in this in this world then it would make sense that there's there's hunters out there um you know hunting hunting them well y- um, you know where my mind is immediately going now Yes. Yeah. So we're going to get someone to run that for us, and yes. it's going to be Sam and Dean. Yes. One hundred percent. Yes. No, no. That, that, I mean, it's got to happen. It's got to happen again. <laughs> I guarantee that if this game is what we think it is, there are already millions of people that have gone. Yeah, I want to be Sam. <laughs> I want to be Dean. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And I've got dibs, dib, dibs on Dean. Yeah, I'll. I'll, I'll I'll happily take Sam. That's absolutely fine. You know, voice of reason, the logic. <laughs> you can just go shabby every now and again, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Yes, and we will carry on wayward. There's a like a complete silence after that. <laughs> <laughs> I expected a reaction at least, but all of a sudden, I mean... complete <laughs> silence coming from you. <laughs> all right, so the next uh, article that I saw mm-hmm. is kind of going back to what we were talking about last week, um, just a bit of an update, that Free League Publishing have revealed that their latest t- uh, tabletop role-playing game series, The Lord of the Rings Role-Playing, will yes. officially launch on May the 9th. Yes. Far sooner than I expected it. Yeah, that's actually uh, not that not that far away. But do you know what I find interesting? And mm-hmm. I don't know. This may may change before release. But everything regarding this fifth edition Lord of the Rings um, uh, rule set that's coming out is that they are actually calling it the Lord of the Rings role playing. Yes. Whereas they're Year the zero one the version one ring. is the one yeah. ring. It's, I, it's an interesting move. To be honest, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be intrigued to find out why the the change. Do you think it's doubling up market? Possibly, because you know it's not uncommon for for publishers to to release their IP in other rule sets. Pathfinder have recently done it um, in Savage Worlds, mm. and they've also released uh, either released or are releasing a fifth edition version of uh, I think it's Kingslayer, Kingmaker. Sorry, completely wrong thing, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, I always kind of got that their sort of end game with with that was to bring people into the Pathfinder fold. Yeah. Whereas Free League looks like it looks like they're kind of happy to keep things separate. They're happy to kind of you know keep marketing towards five E players, mm. and obviously keep their own sort of. Um, fan base going it's it's an interesting tack to be honest it is yeah I mean it's definitely I think also maybe it's to 
to separate out like um for like seo right because if you search for the lord of the rings role playing you're going to get the 5e version if you don't want to play the 5e version then you like you've got the you're not just going to search for the lord of the rings role playing and then get like whatever like if they start going into other systems with it right you're not going to get like 15 different links but like oh shit which one do i want to play um if like keeping it separate like that i think it might also be for, for that sort of thing like if you if you are a 5e player and you want to play the 5e version you've got a category to search for like this is what you search for and you get the 5e version if you want to play the other version then you search for the other version and it just might be that as well that um, make, yeah that does make a lot of sense so yeah, or it could just be that they thought sod it let's just do <laughs> to do it different <laughs> yeah but we don't know what we want to know why justin we... <laughs> i would love to know why get, but get them on the phone one of right those now that we're not gonna be able to find out call sweden unless... right now <laughs> oh call sweden call sweden we'll find out anybody why. in sweden anybody hey, in guys, sweden and just... does anybody know <laughs> does anybody hi yes what's your name yeah sorry is it is this about time <laughs> No, no. Okay, cool. So, about free league. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> Just wondering. And then they'll be like, "Yeah, we don't know either." <laughs> but you, yeah, what you do say makes a lot of sense because mm. the amount of times I've searched Pathfinder and yeah. come up with Nissan Pathfinder parts for a car that I'll never own. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it does kind of make sense that yeah, so they want it to could, kind of like I say, it could that. just be SEO type stuff. Mm. That makes sense. Um, okay, so the next thing I found, um, mm-hmm. this is one I'm I'm really excited about, um, and it is that Paizo revealed new content this week that will be releasing for Pathfinder. They will be bringing Tian Xia to the forefront in three new books. I'm so glad you said that. I was not even going to make an attempt at pronouncing that. (laughs) The first of the releases will be the Season of Ghosts Adventure Path, which will be coming out in October 2023, offering a a bit of haunted adventure just in time for Halloween. Then sometime in 2024, they'll release the Lost Omens Tian Xia World Guide and the Tian Xia Character Guide, both designed to complement each other and offer new options for campaigns. I cannot stress how fucking excited I am about this. <laughs> that region, the region of Tianxia, they have mm. kind of delved into it a tiny bit with like there are a couple of adventure paths like Fist of the Ruby Phoenix. Yeah. But they haven't really gone in depth. And it's always been one of these regions of the world where it's like, yeah, we want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm thoroughly excited about that. That sounds like it's uh, going to be a really good addition to to the game. Yeah, I mean, as much as I love Pathfinder, I love Galeria, and I love the world. You get a bit bored of the inner sea region. Yeah, and it's huge. It's essentially Europe. <laughs> yeah. So so it's not it's not lack of size. Um, but then last year or the year before, they brought out the Mwangi Expanse which was a phenomenal book and mm. you know if Chan Xia is half as good as that um, it's going to be fantastic wasn't that the region that um, in was it your Skulls and Shackles campaign that Scott's character was from that's the Mwangi yeah he yeah. was yeah. he was because Skulls and Shackles happens on the coast of yes. Garund which is um, the continent that contains the Mwangi expanse yes I remember. So it yeah. would be like uh, Galerian's analogy to um, Africa. Yes, because it's like it's right there. Yeah. We can see it. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's it's pretty obvious the way the continents are laid out, what everything's kind of yeah. meant to be. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool, and I'm looking forward to kind of delving mm. into that and the sort no, of character options good. they're gonna bring to the table. Yeah. And this is one that I I just kind of found last minute, and it's I'm, you know I'm oddly excited for it, and it is there is a new survival tabletop role playing game that's going to take inspiration from both The Last of Us and Little Miss Sunshine. Okay. And it's called The Last Caravan. Yeah, okay. Um, have you ever seen Little Miss Sunshine? No. Right, Little Miss Sunshine is an a adorable film 
about mm-hmm. a family that takes a road tr- uh, road trip. Okay. Um, for their little girl to uh, take part in a pageant. Right. And it's all about what happens on this road trip and how the family bond and you know, and it is it is a really good movie. Highly recommend it. But just that set. It, set with the backdrop world. yeah <laughs> i just think it's a really interesting concept oh i've just got this image of like a family trying to take a road trip but like it's just everything around them is just dead <laughs> essentially it's mitchell's versus the machines <laughs> another great fucking movie if you haven't seen it uh yeah i haven't seen that have one. you not honestly no. one of the funniest fucking animated movies i've seen in a long time yeah i can't recommend it enough watch it tonight and thank me later (laughs) all right so that is it for the news yes um so we were going back and forth on topics this week weren't we we were we were a little bit yeah and we did settle on one and we settled on one that i think we've got quite different opinions on <laughs> I know you are heavily pro <laughs> I mean yes and no okay so es- I, I, I'll, I'll explain more in, yeah. in a little bit but yeah so essentially it, the, the, the topic we kind of want to delve into tonight is um, power gaming yes um, what are the valid points of it what are the sort of detrimental points um is it an overall good thing is it an overall bad thing and you are a (laughs) self-confessed power gamer yes i am maybe just kind of want to go into that a tiny bit so yeah so i i've never up until now i've never actually used one of my power builds in a game i and that's why i say yes and no because I love doing it, right? The whole theory crafting behind building these these broken builds, right? As I like to call them. Um, but I don't like to play them because I know that it can be detrimental to a group or a party's enjoyment of the game. Uh, and also the DMs to a, to a degree, right? Because if they spend ages putting together this like really cool encounter and you just deal with it in one round of combat, it's kind of shitty. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like I I really enjoy it though because it's kind of the way my brain works. I like making like these links between like oh well that will will function really well with this feature, and then that if we add in like the feature from this class that lets you do that, then and you kind of you go from there and you kind of build out this like really 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 strong uh, character mechanically speaking that's really good at one particular thing right um and I, i've got two kind of power power gaming builds in my dnd beyond at the moment um one of which i am actually about to play for the first time um and then the other one i just built just to see just like a theory crafting thing right um so the one that I built just to see what I could do was I wanted to see what the highest uh, initiative score I could get to was in 5th ed. <laughs> and at 10th level, I've managed to get it to a plus 15 for initiative. Um, I mean, because obviously I'm not a 5th ed player... <laughs> I mean, 15 from somebody who comes from Pathfinder is just like, yeah, it's standard. But yeah, um, no, fifth but how it, sort it, of out of the ordinary is mo- Well, so initiative in... So 5e, all your stats are locked to 20. Right, So you can't go above a plus 5 modifier. Um, and your initiative is literally just your dex bonus. Right? So at, at most, it's normally about a plus 5. You can get a couple of feats that add to it and stuff like that. But you're normally looking between, uh, like a you, around a plus two to a plus eight would be kind of standard for, um, like most characters. Most characters would wouldn't even really get above a plus four or five, really. Um, 
because it's not something that like going first in 5e isn't all that important uh because there's not many things that can take advantage of going early in the initiative order right however that brings me nicely onto my other build <laughs> which does benefit from going first in the initiative um so the other character that i've built it's it's currently built to level seven because that's what we're going to be uh that that's the level he's entering the campaign at um he is a bugbear he's got five levels in gloomstalker ranger and two levels in fighter which means there's a lot of features basically amongst all of that that give him a crap ton of damage in the first round of combat if he's going before you so bugbears have a feature called surprise attack um which if you are if you hit a creature that has not taken a turn yet in the current combat with an attack roll it takes an extra 2d6 of damage so that's just going to be extra 2d6 on every attack you do and i can do two attacks per action um which so you're taking an extra boatload of damage there then gloomstalker ranger has an ability called dread ambusher which uh if you take the attack action on the first turn of combat uh i can make one additional weapon attack as part of that action dealing an extra 1d8 of damage on that weapon as well so with that with the surprise attack you're doing an extra 2d6 plus 1d8 of damage on that third attack then i've got hunter's mark because ranger which is a bonus action to cast so i can cast that before i do any of my attacks which adds an extra d6 of damage to all of those attacks and then I've got a heavy crossbow, so I'm doing 1d10 plus 5 damage anyway, based just with the crossbow. Mm. So I do that three times, right, with the extra d8 on the third one. Then, two levels on fight, it gives me action surge, which lets me take my attack action again. <laughs> okay. So in that first round of combat, you pump out six, uh, six attacks, and I worked out the like average damage doing that. You're going to do about 130 damage in the first round of combat to up to multiple targets but realistically you do it to the big bad um which at this level because again i know you're not f overly familiar with 5e health blocks um most things have around 50 to 90 health uh, like maximum so what happens after that first round of combat then he just goes to doing two attacks around um still doing you know his 1d 10 plus 5 plus 1d 6 from hunter's mark so his damage doesn't fall off a cliff like he's still useful hmm. um but yeah it's just kind of that that initial burst is just like you can nuke out the biggest threat and then you can just mop up the rest so needless to say that that is something that that kind <laughs> of you know you enjoy that you enjoy kind of having a look at i enjoy mechanics. building it yeah and I mean, I think it's too early to 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 tell whether you enjoy playing it or not, <laughs> um, because that because there is the chance that you start doing this, and after about three combats, you kind of go, "This is fucking boring." Well, and this is where my um, yes and no came in. Is power gaming is not a bad thing if you play it correctly, right? So. The way that I handle that is he knows how good he is at firing his crossbow, right? Like, he's been doing it a long time. So his backstory is he's been a bounty hunter in a city for, like, the last 10 years, right? He's very, very good at what he does. He knows that, though. So unless he sees somebody in this combat as a big threat, he doesn't try. So I don't use that feature until I get to a combat where I'm like, oh this guy's trouble so he kind of uh I, I was gonna say one punch man but that's not really what it is because obviously one punch man gives it his all in every fight and then gets disappointed that they didn't stand up to it it's kind of the opposite of that like he doesn't try unless he has to so i guess it's more like goku hmm. like because goku always starts in his base form doesn't he yeah and then he's like oh okay that they, they can keep up with this let me go up a notch oh they can keep up with this let me go up a notch um, so it's kind of like that. Like he 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 doesn't try unless he feels he has to. Yeah. So that's my way of kind of like offsetting it. Mm. So it's not something that every single fight I'm just gonna be like nuke the big bad and then clean up the rest. Um, it's gonna be just he's just gonna fight normally with everyone else until he gets to a point where he's like you know what 
or or even like if it's uh like we've had a really long day adventuring right and we're trying to get a long rest in and then we get a random encounter that night um he's just gonna be like nope fuck it they're all dead let's go back to sleep Uh, (laughs) it's for those sorts of situations that he's gonna use it really yeah i mean power gaming um (laughs) I think there there have been a couple of systems which maybe didn't encourage power gaming as such. Yes. But they did sort of discourage building for role play purposes. Mm. And um, namely Pathfinder First Edition and D and D three point five. Yes. You know, in those systems there there were so many bad options that if you didn't spend time crafting and and building and and creating uh, a character that would be optimized you ran the risk of having a character that that kind of felt useless yeah i ran into that a few times back when we played and it's uh, that's a sucky position to be in and and you know those systems did kind of promote optimizing but then obviously people <laughs> see how far they can push that particular boat they can you know yes. let's see i mean i've done it myself i've never played a character like that but you know i've i've built mega magi that can do 150 points of damage with one hit and stuff like that yes which is fun um i don't i can't see myself playing them now I like to fail. I like to <laughs> be in a position where I roll a dice and it goes wrong and then I can react to that mm. and have my character react to that. And I I enjoy that. That's For me, it fleshes out my character far more than having a character that's just going to do 150 points of damage around. <laughs> it, that that to me seems boring to be honest i mean yeah it's slight like slightly related to 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 how i play and my style of play is there's a reason why in certain systems i've never played something like a fighter or a barbarian or because mm. i see them as very one dimensional and that doesn't interest me granted in in newer editions they've been given a lot more flavor and a lot more um a lot more things to do which would definitely sort of change my perception but especially in the pathfinder days first edition days i had no interest in playing a fighter no interest in playing a barbarian because for me it was like okay rage attack or moving and attack and i found that just incredibly tedious Yes. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. I mean, I, I played both of those uh, classes in Pathfinder back in the day. Um, I mean, my first character I ever played was a was a barbarian. Um, it was my that dwarf barbarian that I had in our you know in the first few sessions. And and you're right, it was very um, like combat was very single single minded. Right, it was you rage, you go in, you hit stuff. That's it. But I think it's i would say those kind of characters where the combat isn't the main focus of like where you can be versatile with them i've learned more for role playing those characters than i have role playing anything else okay right um and i think it's because you kind of feel like you have to because otherwise you're just sitting there doing fuck all right yeah um at least for me anyway because as you know i've always kind of struggled with the role play element um like getting into into the mindset of character and and like acting in character if that makes sense um that's always been a part of the game that i struggled with and i think playing playing something where combat isn't your focus or it like not isn't your focus that's the wrong word um is very one-dimensional to to use your words um it kind of encourages you to be three-dimensional elsewhere hmm. um so you have to then start role-playing a bit more to get something from that character um and then i've been able to take that and put it into 
other characters that I'm playing that have got those, you know, fun elements elsewhere and stuff like that. Um, so I, I would say that though I've I've got more from role playing those characters than I have from role playing like the quote unquote interesting uh, classes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess everybody get, gets whatever they can out of this game. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, there's no sort of bad way to have fun um however <laughs> there is the the point of how much of a detriment can a heavily optimized character be in a game well, because i've 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 ran games where yep i've played in games where we've had one yeah and people have been unhappy because they yeah. kind of feel like they they're put on the back on the back burner yeah, while it, there is it, one particular character <laughs> who takes the takes the spotlight. spotlight yeah it kind of it puts you in in uh, a situation where there's only really two outcomes right if you've got somebody who so if you've got a power gamer who doesn't hold themselves back right so like where obviously this this bugbear that I've built, right? He is really, really strong. He could pretty much end most encounters immediately if he wanted to. But I'm deliberately holding him back so that that doesn't happen because I don't want to be in that position, if you know what I mean, mm. where, you know, the players, other players at the table are like, well, what's the fucking point in us being here for combat? I don't want that to be the case. So that's why I'm deliberately holding him back and I'm saving that, you know, big fucking burst of like, holy shit for something that's going to be uh like more more that's just going to be like a nuisance to the party rather than like a really cool encounter so like if uh or, or something that i know would be able to survive that big burst um so that i can kind of like get it down to a point where the rest of the party can finish it off right uh so like if if a big dragon lands i'll fucking nuke it and then the rest of the party can just kill it um some something like that but go back to what i was saying if you if you've got that player in the in there that's power gaming but they're not holding themselves back like that it kind of forces you and it's part of the reason i actually started power gaming was because we had one of those players and you know i know that you know who i'm talking about yeah um and it kind of forced me to in my mind i either had to stop playing right or start power gaming myself to be on that level um and that's where i started i started playing around with that sort of thing like really really seriously because i wanted to see what i could do and how far i could push it um but with that particular player i would never keep up because his knowledge of the game was just far superior than mine would ever be um which is part of the reason i kind of moved away from from pathfinder a little bit uh, and I moved into a system that I could learn that the like power gaming is a lot harder in fifth edition um, to a degree. Like it's still possible, very very much so. But the the gap between a really really broken character in air quotes and an average character isn't as big as it is in something like Pathfinder. It's one of the reasons why I kind of like Pathfinder Second Edition um, mm. is because power gaming now i'm not gonna say it's not an option <laughs> because i'm sure that there are people out there that yeah. are able give to... me a minute <laughs> oh you tried you tried and it didn't work yeah but i didn't know the system yet <laughs> but um, it's very very hard to do and yeah. what i what i like more about it is that the quote-unquote less optimized options aren't mm. crippling yes so even if power gaming is an option the the sort of imbalance that that would cause is mitigated massively because you know even if someone comes in and kind of goes right i want to build this character for fun i want to build this character because i'm in love with the character not with what he can do yeah. what they can do sorry um so i will create this character however i feel is most fun to do and yet they will still 
be relevant. They will still be impactful and they won't feel like, oh shit, well, what's the point of me being here? It- yeah. I think that's that's where the, the detriment of power gaming comes in is if it's not implemented correctly, it does make everyone else at the table think, what's the fucking point? Um, like, power gaming can absolutely be done in a way that isn't ruining the experience for everyone else right it's it is entirely possible and what's really fun and and this is something that i i have done in the past um i've played a game where everyone built like the optimal and like a an optimal build character right so it was just this group of ridiculously overpowered people um and that's kind of fun because then at like low levels you're taking on things that you should never be able to take on at that level because all of you can um so that's kind of cool in its own right because it it kind of you still have that level playing field but that level is just higher (laughs) yeah i mean i did contemplate this while i was thinking about my answer to this to this sort Mm. of topic is having a table where everybody power games yes because as a gm the the difficulty that comes with people power gaming is that you can't provide a balanced challenge because you either have to compensate for the power gamer mm-hmm. or you have to focus on, on on the others and if you constant compensate for the person who's power gaming nobody else stands a chance um yeah and and again that goes back to that that situation that uh, where I said before where I, I was in a group with a power gamer and I kind of felt a bit useless right um, and it, it kind of does it does make you feel that way a little bit because you either either they're just going to walk through everything right um, which is going to be shit for them or the and shit for everyone else because it's you know what's the point in them being there if this other person is just going to walk through it all um or the other option is it becomes a challenge for that one person um but it's still really shit for everyone else because they're just like again well what are we doing here um which is why i think to 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 do power gaming without causing issues is is very difficult uh which is even myself like like you say i am a self-confessed power gamer i love building really really strong broken stuff right um i spend so many hours watching videos of other people coming up with concepts and like trying them and then tweaking them myself to see if i can make them a little bit better here or a little bit better there and stuff like that um and but i've uh, up until now i've never played one in a campaign because i didn't want to be put in i didn't want to put other people in that position um which is why i had that concept of he doesn't use it like he's got the power he knows he does but he doesn't use it he's got the touch yeah basically um you know but he he doesn't he never really turns it on unless he absolutely feels he has to sorry i just want to i just want to shout out to all my fellow 80s kids that would have heard me say (laughs) he's got the touch and immediately think of the transformers movie (laughs) <laughs> sorry carry on carry on i didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> <That's> I <had laughs> <right>. to. <laughs> um but I, I i i think power gaming is one of those things that if it's handled correctly it can still be a lot of fun but handling it correctly is what makes it hard um because you, you've you, <sighs> balancing the encounters it, it, it's possible right because there's ways you could like separate the group or uh, i mean we've all seen like those those films right where they're going through some kind of labyrinth or tomb or something right and then the, a wall comes up and the group separated and one of them's fighting like it's normally like the main character of the film is fighting like the mummy that they're, they're against and the others are fighting like uh like his little henchman or whatever right um so like those kind of moments could could happen where they're walking through and like a wall comes up and he's on the side with like some big fucking rhino or something and the others are fighting like the the bandits that have sprung this trap right um so there are ways to do it where you still kind of give everyone a fair fight 
but they're separated so that you don't have the power game and just like one shotting all of the the minions so they can all gang up on the big thing or vice versa he one shots the big thing so that they can all just gang up on the little things so i think it's just you just have to approach your combats differently when you've got somebody who's capable of that at the table but how many instances of separating the children can you do before it gets <sighs> tedious you know okay I mean, so this oh you fall <laughs> down this ravine and there's a big bad evil thing that will kill everybody else except for you and while these are facing the mooks and then in the next combat well <laughs> Um, uh, uh, um, there's another ravine that you fall down. <laughs> you know, I mean, I get, I, I mean, get you mean. Yeah. I do get you mean uh, what you mean, and that you can balance, but um, you shouldn't have to. Is my point? You really shouldn't have to do that, um, because one thing I have noticed about a lot of power gamers is that they are pretty. Um, as far as where their characters are involved they're pretty self-involved so if you do present a combat which would challenge everybody in the party including the person who's power gaming they're mm. not going to give a shit if the cleric's just got knocked on his ass, other than oh he can heal me so yeah I mean I, I, I would say that some of the power gamers that I've seen in the past yes um, I would agree some of them are but I have also come up against some that aren't um, I think it just comes down to the the individual as a person, you know, and whether they're power gaming or not, they're still going to play that way. Um, I've had people in my group uh, where I, I I played in a twentieth level campaign um, where there was a, a player that um, used meta game knowledge right to do something in the in game and he did that purely because he felt like he needed to win uh, even though we were meant to be a group right he felt like he had to win and he used that to like, he killed my character based on something that his character would have never known but he was like oh yeah but I, I absolutely would have done that it's like you wouldn't because you didn't know the, that you know what I mean um, so I think that kind of player is always going to play selfish regardless of whether they're power gaming or not because they're just a selfish player i agree there i do agree but i think there we're kind of encroaching not specifically on on power gaming because you know we can line up a list of of things that people do to <laughs> quote unquote win at tabletop win. role-playing games <laughs> like you know not deducting hit points when they've been hit yes the obvious one is lying about roles. Um, yeah. What else? Conveniently misinterpreting rules and then going, oh, oh, sorry, I mis oh, misunderstood oh, that's that. that's how that works, yeah. Adding the I extra mean, yeah, five but... foot of movement like the GM isn't going <laughs> to fucking notice. That, I mean, <laughs> that's going to be a topic for another day. Yeah, oh, how to deal but... with these fucks. <laughs> what, what, what I was more, more getting at is that kind of player who plays selfishly for themselves is going to play selfishly regardless of whether they're power gaming or not. So even if you've got somebody who would be a power gamer, like in their natural habitat, for lack of a better way of explaining it, um, that doesn't power game because you've told them, no, that's too, you need to dial that back or whatever, right? And they've dialed the character back. They are still the same person, right? So they're still going to play selfishly. They're just not going to be as strong as if they were playing selfishly with a power, like a power built character. Um, so they're still not going to care if the cleric gets knocked on his ass or if the rogue you know does something stupid or, or whatever right they're, they're still going to play that selfish mentality because that's just who they are yeah i do i do agree um so I, I don't think that's exclusively an issue to power gamers because if you again if you get a power gamer who isn't a selfish player they're going to be using that power that they've got to better the party i think it's probably my experience that, that has it, just it's been... absolutely that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i you know i think we've we've kind of reached a, a decent sort of mutual understanding and i think we do kind of see a lot of the same points probably from different yes. perspectives mine's probably more from a gm perspective as that's mm essentially my primary my where you primary encountered role. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so should we do a question Le oh yeah let's go for it yes we what is what what question have we got we today? have a question today and it is comes from pete donald peter donald in south Hello, end peter. in our very own back, uh, neck of the woods 
Yeah, down down our way. Uh, this is yeah, this is gonna this is gonna have, it foster some discussion. <laughs> and uh, in in quite an interesting way it is which celebrity would you most want to play a tabletop RPG with and what type of character do you think they'd play okay so my answer for this is really easy uh, for the first half the second half I'm not sure but I would absolutely love to play any kind of tabletop game with Henry Cavill I think that would just be amazing he seems like a genuinely decent, fun individual anyway. We all know he's got he's got a nerdy side. We all know this. Um, and I just think it would be a really cool experience. So that would be my choice. I know there are a lot of celebrities who do play d and um, like openly. Um, like you've got, you know, like uh, Joe Manganiello or that lot that play and have like, you know, all their stuff. But I, I, Henry Cavill would be my choice for that. I have no idea what he would play though. Um, mm, what would it- I feel like he would play mm. some kind of caster. Interesting, yeah. That, that's just my my feeling on it because obviously he he in all of his like in his films he is always playing the big tough guy. Yeah. So I think he would want to maybe get away from that when he was role playing, and he would want to play something like a bit squishier. But so I think he would go caster just to have that offset, you know. Mm. Yeah, possibly. I mean, yeah, Henry Cavill is a good choice. I mean, we know mm. he's played a paladin esque sort of yes. character in in the form of Superman. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the Witcher. The Witcher, as well. which is probably more, you know, obviously a fighter with, yeah. with some sort of magical influence. That that'd be easy to build in second edition. It'd be very easy to build in five years as well. So I was I was thinking, and you know, I think we can go back and forth on this because I kind of wanted to stay away from the known role players. Yeah, you know, for me that was that was too easy of an answer. You know, like your Joe Manganiello's, Vin Diesel's, Big Show. Yeah, exactly. Um, Tom Morello, apparently. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, Joe Manganiello put a picture up of his table, his nine mm. fucking players. Yeah. Uh, Vince Vaughn was there. Uh, yeah, dude. Like, have you seen his table though? That custom table that, he had made. Is that the new one from Wormwood? Yeah. yeah, it looks nice. It looks nice. Beautiful. Very nice Beautiful table. Tables. So I kind of wanted to stray away from that because I feel like, mm. you know, those are the, the, the given answers. The obvious, yeah. One person I thought of that would be fucking epic to have at the table, mm. Gary Oldman. Oh, yes. And he would yes. play whatever the fuck he wanted to. At once, <laughs> <laughs> he'd play everything at once. <laughs> you know, we talk yeah, about power gamers. One. What about a power role player? <laughs> Dude, that that would actually be pretty cool. I think. Um, yeah, I think I think I'd I'd like to see him in a role that was quite um, not necessarily evil, but not squeaky clean. Something with a bit yes. of gravitas. A bit of that kind of uh, moral ambiguity, shall we Maybe say? Maybe a rogue then. Yeah, or or even like just like an oathbreaker paladin would be pretty good. That would be good. I I think he'd definitely bring that. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, Gary, if you're listening, if you're listening, Gary, <laughs> the, give us a call. Give us a call. I mean, I've, you know, you can come join us anytime. I'll 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 GM. Um, I think. The, the the one other person that I I would love to get on a table with just to w- settle it once and for all, I would have to play a game with Will Wheaton. <laughs> I would have to, just so we can settle it once and for all, which one of us rolls worse, right? Because anybody who's seen me play knows I roll worse, right? But I know that everybody in the world of the internet and the rest of the world thinks that I'm exaggerating. <laughs> well, what I would do, I would GM that game. <laughs> and I would also, you know, give you carte blanche on any fucking power build that you wanted to because I wouldn't feel threatened at all. Well, I mean that that's also part of the reason that I don't mind power build uh, power gaming because the way I roll doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean I was I was almost going to cut you off at one point when you were talking about your power build kind of going, yeah, it's still you rolling though. 
Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I think that's part of the reason that my DM has allowed it because he knows that, yes, it might be very strong, but I still have to not roll ones. Yeah, so, Will, if you're listening, yep. uh, please forgive any things I may have said in previous episodes about you. Um, <laughs> come and join the table and let's settle this once and for all. So, actually, let, let's take that question one step further, right? So we, we've both given like a, a, a person that we would we would love to play with. How about... Sorry, can I just add one more? Yes. One more. I, I, was, that, that, I was just going to say, why, why don't we both put together like a table of four people? Okay, all right. Right. So I've given two, so you, you've got three to okay, go. Okay, so my second one is going to be the bard of the party, mm-hmm. Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like he, it. Yeah, just one... Yeah, he would smash being a bard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Um, I think I would I would really really enjoy having um, someone like Adam Sandler at the table, and I think he would probably play something like a bard as well. Um, so he would kind of be the bard of of my table, I think, um, just because of like that quick fire wit that he would bring to that character as well like his vicious mockery would actually be vicious mockery you know what i yeah. mean like um so i think yeah I, I would love to have adam sandler at the table as well. all right <laughs> okay so i've got my rogue i've got my bard all right should we do five mm. should we do like a, a proper yeah, let's, round let's go five. party yeah yeah let's so go five. i've got a rogue i've got a bard um because yeah i i think rogue for um for gary oldman yeah i think i think it just fits um, I'm gonna go cleric, and I think there's only mm-hmm. one answer to for for someone who is gonna play a pious man, and that's gonna be Morgan Freeman. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that dude played good. God twice, so yeah, yeah. Um, he he could be his own deity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, that is good. Right. Um. So I, I've got one that I think uh, actually, actually I'm going to give my final two in in this one because that they kind of come as a pair at the moment, um, and I just think it would be amazing to have them there at the table. Um, I would want Kevin Hart <laughs> and The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> as, as soon as you said came in a pair, it was like yeah, he, he's going Jumanji. <laughs> Yeah, just because, again, I think they would be hilarious on whatever character they decided to play, right? Um, and I think that, that would kind of round out my table. So my table would be Henry Cavill, <laughs> Will Wheaton, just so we can settle it once and for all. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, Adam Sandler, Kevin Hart, The Rock. That's yeah, my table. That's, that's a good table. So what would yeah. Kevin Hart and The Rock play? Because you've got your, you've got, because we went, you did say. Yeah, so car, caster for uh, Henry Cavill, yeah. so that he he'd be kind of like a, he'd be some kind of wizard or something like that. Bard for Sandler. Um, I feel like Will Will could kind of just fill whatever role was missing because he he is a sort of you know very well rounded player when when it comes to that element. Um, so I think he would just kind of fill that role of whatever the other two don't pick up, he'll play. I feel like I could see Kevin and Dwayne doing what they do, kind of like what happened in the Jumanji film, where they're playing like the opposite of themselves, if that makes sense. So like Kevin would be playing like the big butch character, like a paladin or something like that. Um, and then... Uh, Dwayne would play something really sort of like a rogue. Like he would be the rogue, I think. Okay. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. So that leaves me yeah. with two, doesn't it? So, yes. And it leaves me with two party roles, yeah, because obviously I need a frontliner. Yes. Um, frontliner fighter, and I obviously need some sort of caster, maybe wizard yep. or sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah, this is uh, this isn't going to be easy. But I feel, I feel that a fighter, like a frontliner, maybe even a mm-hmm. paladin. Yeah. Gotta go, Sigourney Weaver, man. Okay. 
you know, I just think she's going to bring that sort of level of rippliness <laughs> to yeah. the role that it's like, yeah, all right. I can yeah, see her. Well, as a yeah, fighter. yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. And then bringing up, bringing up the 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 last sort of position as either a wizard or a sorcerer. Mm-hmm. I would have to think. Oh, this is a tough one. <laughs> I think Ryan Reynolds as a wizard. Really, you wouldn't have Ryan Reynolds as a bard? No, fuck it. Ryan Reynolds is a wizard. Really? Yeah, as a I know everything oh. more than you. One hundred percent. Oh, one of those yep. kind of wizards, right? Yeah, I get you. I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. plus, <laughs> you know, Lin Manuel is my bard. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah. So I think that that kind of uh, that that is two really really good tables that I would enjoy playing that would be completely honest. that would be a ton of fucking fun and not only that I think we have we have answered that question in spades <laughs> I, I would like to think so so hopefully you enjoyed that answer yeah uh, thank, and thank you for the question yeah thank you for the question and anybody else that would like to send in a question please do so because like I've said many times we need something to do <laughs> You know, we've got very boring lives, if not. So, you know, questions and stuff like that are going to keep us going, are going to keep us doing this. Mm. You know, as long as we've got something to talk about, we're going to be back week after week doing this. So yep. send in your questions at questions at twolegittocrit.uk. And there is also a form which will be in the description of the episode. Yes. All right. And I think that is about it from us. Um, there was a meme that we kind of looked at and went, yeah, let's yeah. have a, let's, let's discuss this. So, you know, we're going to cl- kind of close out with, with this. And it is basically a meme, and I think it's a screenshot from Skyrim, I'm guessing. Yeah, it looks like one of the Skyrim games. And games, yeah. it is basically a group of people standing there, and it says, hey, you know that guy that just killed a dragon and ate its soul? Let's mug him. <laughs> <laughs> and we found that amusing, but it also, yes. it also kind of does um, raise some questions, especially from a GM perspective, <laughs> about how you would justify that. Because it's always good to throw in random encounters. Some of those random random encounters, we all know bandits, and we all know cultists, and we all, you know, they're they're quite they're staples now of the of the of the of the hobby so you know how do yeah. you kind of go about justifying mugging a fucking superhero see my my, my logic on this is simple they have no fucking do clue they, yeah they don't know because like let's be honest right nine times out of ten like, there's no internet so unless they've heard a bard telling the tale of you doing that they're not even going to know it's happened even if they did know it's happened they're not going to know it was you no, you're not walking around with a big like neon sign saying, "Hey, I'm the guy that killed that dragon." Like you're just some dickhead in a tent. Yeah, but I mean, going on the so what happens if these bandits see them killing the dragon? Well, then you don't mug them. <laughs> then you skip that encounter. <laughs> I don't know. I posit it that you know maybe they fancy their chances. Maybe. Well, I suppose yeah, you could be weak from the dragon fight. Yeah, they could be weak from the dragon fight. Or, mm-hmm. you know, we live in a city with, with a few <laughs> nightclubs and we see what people do when inebriated. True, 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 true. I can fucking take him. <laughs> ah, yeah, I, I, I oh, can't take a dragon with one dragon. hand behind my back. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that is a possible explanation. They were wankered. <laughs> They're just overconfident, wankered individuals. Yeah, exactly. They've, <laughs> they, they've got negative to all their roles because of how hammered they are but still they're gonna <laughs> give it a go <laughs> all right so i do believe that's it from us yes all right justin that, that do you is... want to tell the people where they can find you uh I, I mean i'm not gonna give them my address but i'll tell them when they can find me online i'll give them your address um, <laughs> you don't know my address oh. i moved <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you can find me uh, either on Instagram, uh, it's uh, at Arctic 
underscore official arctic spelled really weirdly so it'll be down in the in the doobly doo um uh, or over on twitch uh hey it's arctic or one word and arctic spelled properly there because i learned how to spell uh, uh, it's a handy <laughs> skill to have it is um for me you can find me um on twitter mastodon and instagram as at natural juan um also if you are in the south end area um come down to gamers nexus in hadley on the 13th and 14th of may for a two-day pathfinder convention i Ooh. will personally be running malevolence and tickets are available on warhorn i will put the link in the description mm-hmm. well thank you to to our friend who wrote in with a question yes thank you justin for keeping me company for an hour on this sunday you're more than welcome and thank you to everyone that takes time out of their valuable day and to listen to two idiots waffle on about role playing games (laughs) I've never heard a more accurate description of this in my life (laughs) (laughs) thank you very much everyone good night see you later guys